so in this video, we're going to expand a little bit more on the Inpom import feature, um, especially on the random library. So what we saw in the last video is that we were able to import the random library. We were able to access certain functions inside of this random library. So we were able to go into random and then we use the dot to access certain features. So in this case, we accessed randint from the random library. We accessed random from the random library and we accessed the uniform function from the random library. Then we went on to import random as R. So we gave it a little nickname and instead of having to write random, we just had to write R. So r.randint, which goes into the random library because we import it random as R. So we gave it this nickname and then we go into the random library again, nicknamed R, and we take out this, this random function and we go into the random library one more time here and we take out the uniform function. So that already saves a nice amount of space. We don't have to write out the whole name every time. We can go kind of easy, use nicknames, you know, make it shorter, make it more readable sometimes, you know, make it a lot more convenient. Um, but something that we do encounter when we import random and even if we import it as a nickname is that we import the whole library. And I mean, right now it's not a problem, but you know, it may be a problem if you have memory constraints, for example, because if you import the whole library, it needs to get saved somewhere. So you may only want to import certain features or certain functions like the randin function, for example, because that's all you're going to use um, to kind of take care of this, this memory constraint so that you don't have to worry about, you know, using too much memory or something because you only import what you really need. So how would we go about that? Well, if we kind of comment out this importing method and try out another one. So what we want to do is from this random library, we just want to import randint. So how would we do that? Well, we would use the keyword from, and what we're going to do is from random. So that's this, this is the library name. So this is what we're going into. Um, from random, we're going to import, and now we want to put in the function name that we want to import. So in case of randint, we want to go from random, we want to import randint like this. And so something else that we need to do is we need to take away the R dots in front of here. Even if we had the random dot, we're not going into the random library anymore because we didn't import the random library. We're just taking the function directly because from the library, we imported the function. So we don't have to do this R dot or random dot anymore and go into the library. We directly have the function accessible to us. So we can take all of that away. Now, if we do that for randint, we see this kind of warning here on the side goes away. If we take away this R dot in front of random, we see that we're still getting an error. Um, in this case, it doesn't know what random is. If we take this r dot away in front of uniform, we see we're still getting an error because, well, if it updates, um, it doesn't know what uniform is. So if we run our code, for example, what used to work before um, is now that we get an error and it's telling us, well, random is not defined. I don't really know what random is. And if we actually look up before our program crashed, we see we got an output number eight. So this is from this rand int uh, variable, which is comes from the rand int function. But as soon as we reach this random function, we get an error. And that's because we didn't import the whole library now. We only imported a certain function. So we only imported the rand in function. So what we can do, for example, is we can comment these out like this. And if we run it now, now it would run smoothly and it just gives us back our random integer. Now say we want to take on, uh, we want to only use this, this random function. We can just import random. So from the random library, we import the function called random. And so now we have to comment out this rand int and we uncomment this rand float and we see now we get a random float. So what crashed before now works. Now, if from random instead, we want to use uniform, we import uniform instead. And now if we comment out this random here and we see this little warning coming again, random is undefined and we uncomment this, then we see the uniform works too. So cool, now we were able to import um, special features or, or special functions from the library and we don't have to have, or we don't have to deal with all this memory constraint 
and importing a lot of functions that we may not be using. <clears throat> but what if we want to import multiple functions? So let's say we want to use random and uniform. What we can do is we can just put in a comma afterwards and then we can type in the name of our next function. So now we're importing uniform and random. And well, if we want to go on, we can put in another comma and you know put in the names of our next functions and more commas and and whatnot but let's just leave that as a comment here just this is just kind of for reference so um but what we're doing here is we're importing uniform and we're importing random from random so now we can actually uncomment this too and now both random and uniform are going to work like this um, and that's because we've imported random and uniform and we also notice we don't need to put an r dot or a random dot in front. This works just like this because we're just importing these two functions. Now, something that you can also do, which doesn't really make a lot of sense that much, uh, but sometimes you may do it, is from random, you can import star. And what that does is it imports everything. Um, so let's see if we comment this out. Um, so we're getting little warnings here, um, but it should work. So if we run this, we see that, that everything works. So what we're doing is from random, we're importing everything, but now we're not going into the random dot. <clears throat> Since we've actually imported everything, we can just use the functions like this directly without having to go into the library. Now you may want to be careful with this because it could be that you also have a function yourself called random or randint or uniform or you know whatever else and there be maybe some name conflicting going on so this is why we have these these errors here is that it's telling us well it may be undefined um but you know so this is this is kind of something that you have to watch out for um or in this case well the function may not be defined because it doesn't really know what's inside here that's what this error is telling us but something that you also have to watch out for is that you know you may be overwriting stuff um, and so if you want to import everything, even though here you don't have to go into the random library technically, you don't have to do the random dot or the r dot, it's probably better anyway to just import random as r maybe to kind of keep it short, and then you just have to put the r dot in front again um, to indicate that you're taking uniform from the library r, and the or and this r in this case stands for random since we've imported random as this nickname. And so this is kind of a more safe way to go about it. But these are all kind of options, um, options for you to take. So yeah, well, anyway, so we've covered creating single random numbers now. Maybe let's go on and look a little bit more at random numbers, but let's go on to dealing with random numbers and lists. So what we wanna do is we want to go and, well, let's just create a simple, simple list like this um, and we're going to make this equal to and then we're going to create a list by opening closing square brackets and we're just going to put in some elements here so let's put in one three five seven and eleven cool so nice we've we've got ourselves some great numbers here so what we're doing is we've just created a simple list which has the elements one three five seven and eleven like this and now what we want to do is we want to pick a certain element from here so what we want to do is we want to pick an element and we'll save this in a variable called pick element and what we're doing is we're going to go into the simple list and we're just going to randomly pick out one of these elements so to do that we have a variable name that we're going to save it in we go equal to and then we go uh, we go into the random or in this case it's actually the r library, which is short for random. And in here, we want to access the function choice. And then we open and close parentheses and we want to put inside what we want to choose from. So we want to choose from the simple list. And if we now print pick element, maybe let's just comment out the stuff before so that we don't get kind of spam output here so that we only actually see what we want to see. If we run this now, we see that we've picked out the element 11 in this case. And if we run it again, we've picked out seven now. If we run it again, we picked out three. Run it again, three again. Run it again, seven. So what we're seeing is we're only getting elements from this simple list here that we've created and, and nothing outside. So that's really cool too. I mean, 
Of course, there are ways, you know, you could say, ah, well, I could have just created a random integer and then I could have looped through um, my elements um, or my simple list and I could have chosen out the random um, element that corresponds to the index and I want to make sure that the random integer is within the length of my list and yeah sure you can write a function like that but you know this this saves you the trouble this says tells you you don't have to um, and so that's, that's what's really great about all these libraries it, it just saves you time it, it lets you focus on the important things in your project you don't have to worry about creating these you know secondhand functions or something that or these you know like secondhand features that you're going to need to use um, for your program to work correctly, but it's not really part of your program or your project. Um, so the great thing about these libraries is that you can kind of import everything that's been done already and use that to create whatever you want to create so that you can kind of move on and do what you actually want to do without having to focus so much on doing some of the things that may not be that relevant, but that could be necessary. And so this is the great thing about these these importing libraries that you can that that this this code and these functions and features are already made readily available for you and they're just ready for you to use. So something else that we can do, for example, is instead of picking out an element from this list, we can shuffle up this list completely. So if we print out maybe our, our simple list just one more time before we completely mix it up. And now what we're going to do is we're going to shuffle up all the elements in this list. So we're going to completely mix and mash them. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the random package or the random. Oh, so we imported as R, so we just only need to use R. And so we're going to go inside R, which is random since we imported random as R. And here we're going to access the, oh, we are going to access the shuffle function. And inside of the shuffle function, we're going to put in the thing that we want to shuffle. So we are going to put in our simple list. And what is this going to do? It's just going to shuffle it up for us. So if we print out our simple list now, <clears throat> and if we run our code, what we're going to see is first we see the output from the pick element. So this is just the random element that we chose. Then we see our simple list before we did anything to it, which is right here. And now from the random library, we've taken the shuffle function and we've given it the simple list as our input. And what it's done is it's shuffled the elements in our simple list around. So we see they're different from before. Now, if we run it again, we see the elements are different from before again. And well, here we get a random element that we picked. If we run it again, we see once again, oh, actually this time we got the exact same permutation. So that's just purely coincidental. <clears throat> if we run it again, we see that we get different shuffling again. Let's just run it again one more time. And well, we see, oh, we almost get the original list back, but we have one permutation here. But all we're, that we're seeing is just these these elements inside are being shuffled up. Um, and so this is what this, this shuffle function does. And you see that we don't actually save it in any kind of variable. We just put in the list or whatever we want to shuffle. We call the shuffle function on it from the R or from the random library. And then our simple list is just shuffled up. So yeah, that's another one of the another really cool features that's contained inside random. Um, the random actually has a bunch more features and I can't really show you everything. These are just maybe some of the common ones that you may be interested in using that are a bit more popular. But obviously there are many different ways of getting random numbers. You can have them even be weighted based on you know distributions. Um, all of those are options. Uh, if you want, you can check out the documentation for random. So you can kind of look at it and the documentation tells you what, um, what functions are contained inside. So what you can actually do is you can Google random Python and you're gonna get a web page and that's gonna tell you about the random library and it's gonna tell you everything that's contained inside. So all of these libraries that you can import, they actually have documentation that goes along with it. And this documentation explains to you what's inside and it also, also gives you sample code on how to use it. Um, and so if you want to import special features, then you can look that up and you can, you know, you can read a little bit about how, what it does. You can see some examples, you can see how it's been implemented and stuff. And it usually gives you some, some nice examples, some nice ways to work with it. 
It explains um, everything that's contained inside and how to use it and what the inputs are and stuff because you can't be expected to know that because you didn't create any of this. This is just created from someone else and you can all you're doing is just importing it and using it because it has great features. And so Python has this great community uh, of a bunch of people that create all these things and just upload them online uh, that are ready for you to use. And so you can just kind of take these, um, use them in your code. Um, and well, you probably would have to look at the, def uh, the documentation too, just to see how to use it. But it's, it's really great that all of these functions um, that you may need have already been pre-created for you so that you don't really have to worry about creating everything from scratch and you can just really focus on the important things. Thank you.